In the market for a new laptop, AMD has overhauled how it names its mobile processors. And yes, I know, things are already confusing enough in the tech world with how many changes there have been to USB and Wi-Fi and display standards, but it turns out Team Red isn't just doing this to torture us. You see, AMD apparently ran out of ways to fit their upcoming laptop processors into their old naming scheme. So there's a new one that, well, it takes a little bit of explaining. Before we get into the nitty gritty, we'd like to thank our friend Matthew Hurwitz from AMD for helping to clarify the reasoning behind some of the decisions the company made. Going forward, each laptop CPU is gonna have a name with four digits followed by a letter, but the two most important for those of you concerned about performance will be the middle two digits. The second digit is gonna tell you whether the chip is a Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, 7 or 9, or a lower end Athlon chip, denoted by a one or a two. Confusingly though, already it's confusing, the second digit won't always match up to the actual product stack. Both three and four can indicate a Ryzen 3 chip. Five and six can indicate a Ryzen 5, and here's the real curveball. Eight could indicate a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9. The third digit, mercifully, is a little more straightforward. This lines up with whichever architectural generation the chip uses. So three for Zen 3, four for Zen 4, and five for the upcoming Zen 5. Nice and simple. But what about the other numbers? Well, the first digit of the whole name is the model year. Seven for 2023, eight for 2024, and nine for 2025. Although the model year itself doesn't tell you much about the processor's capabilities, I mean, it's not a car, AMD told us that the reason this was placed first was to allow customers to quickly tell if the laptop is current or if it's a previous year's model. And in case you're wondering how in the world a seven corresponds to 2023, last year's mobile parts started with a six. And this gen's desktop chip names will start with a seven, so there's some harmony there. Another goal of starting with the model year is to easily indicate when there's a model that's similar to last year's, but with a slightly higher performance. So a 7530 and an 8530, for example. Those would denote similar chips, but with the latter being a little newer and a little nicer than the former, even though they'd be using the same architecture. But one of the things that's a bit annoying about this naming scheme is even if these are not on the same architecture, an older design could still have a bigger number up front, a potential point of confusion for consumers. Okay, but what about the rest of the naming scheme? We'll tell you how to decipher that right after we thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a hands-on and interactive way to learn STEM topics. They offer thousands of courses with new topics to learn each month, like their everyday math course. Simply honing your ability to learn and think will translate to everyday aspects of life. Their services can be used to supplement a college education or just to scratch that curiosity itch if getting smarter is just a passion of yours. The first 200 people who head to brilliant.org slash techquickie will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. The fourth number is always gonna be either a zero or a five and simply indicates either a lower end or a higher end chip respectively, all other things being equal. The letter at the end though is a little more interesting. CPU aficionados will be familiar with the letter suffixes, especially on the mobile side. And AMD's new scheme is curiously similar to what we've seen with their rivals at Intel. Top end laptop processors will get an HX designation indicating a TDP of 55 watts and higher. Sitting below that is HS for 35 plus watt chips that are still high end, but geared more towards thin form factor systems. Moving down the stack, we have the 15 plus watt U suffix for ultra thin notebooks and C for Chromebooks. Finally, there's a little E, which designates a nine plus watt computer that's basically a fanless version of the U. So what does this all mean for you? Well, a lot of hardware enthusiast sites have panned the naming scheme as being overly complicated, as well as a way for AMD to pass off what are essentially older chips as being current models, similar to the shenanigans of how Nvidia has continually rebadged lower end GPUs that are many years old. On the flip side, having the middle couple of numbers giving us lots of information about the product, again, similar to Nvidia, as well as Radeon GPUs, is isn't new and Team Red did at least provide us with an explainer. But what do you think of all this, especially as it compares to AMD's old naming scheme? Comment down below and remember to argue with your fellow viewers as much as possible. That's what makes a healthy comment section. We love to see it. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked this video, hit like, hit subscribe and hit us up in the comment section with your suggestions of videos that we should cover in the future.